Hello everybody, my name is Borje Justrell, I'm the project coordinator coming from the National Archives of Sweden. Uh, Claudio Prandoni, whose name you can also see on the slide, is sometimes doing this kind of presentation, so we are sharing the responsibility for it. I will give you a very uh, to the Performa project. Uh, Performa is what we call a pre-commercial plumer project, and it's co-funded by the European Commission. Of course, it's a, as many of these projects, projects are. The objective is to empower memory institutions to gain full control over the process of conformity tests of files that are intended for long-term preservation. We have a website and you can see the address there. Uh, we also have some contact persons. We, of course, as project coordinator, you can also contact the technical coordinator, who is Antonella Fresa, and also, of course, the communication coordinator, who is Claudio Prandoni, both in Italy. Uh, you, the project partners are, except from Sweden, uh, and Riksarkivet, that is the National Archives in Sweden. Also, Promoter, of course, where, where you find Antonella Fresa and, and uh, Claudia Prandoni. Um, uh, we have technical partners and memory institutions. And the technical partners are expertise, uh, have expertise in different fields. Uh, and help us, memory institutions, to go through with this project. Uh, we also have a number of memory institutions, different kind, archives, library, etc., who are, are interested in the field of, of the, uh, preservation and also how to handle the formats. The, what we call the Performa Challenge is that we have in the project to develop three open source conformance checkers for electronic documents, still images, and AV content. And, that, and these um, conformance checkers say, shall check if a file complies with a standard specification, what we call an implementation checker. Also check if a file complies with the acceptance criteria of the memory institutions, that's what we call a policy checker, and also report back to human and software agents, what we call reporter, and if possible, perform simple fixes, metadata fixes, we call it. Uh, the challenge is also to set up interoperability mechanisms that allows the integration of the tools into the legacy system of memory institutions and their extensions to new formats. And the third challenge to establish what we call a sustainable community that ensures long-term availability of the software. In general, it is useful feedback for those who control the software uh, and advances improvement of the standard specifications. So this is what we call the performance challenge, and this is also what we actually are heading at. Uh, the conformance checkers that we have in Performa is uh, three projects that are focusing on electronic documents, steel images, and on the visual. And today you will get a presentation of uh, the, their PDF and their work with electronic documents, PDFA. Uh, we have a open source portal, which you can find on the address here. And uh, this is a, what we call a unique, a unique uh, access point to all the open source projects uh, that, that we have, latest downloads, documentations, etc., etc., relevant links. So please visit it. You can also do our network, uh, and we have culture institutions and other content providers outside the performer consulting. They can participate in the requirement, refinement and on the, on the, on the requirements and in the definition of the policies to be checked. And they can also contribute to the evaluation and assessment of the software by providing data sets to be used to test the prototypes. And developers can contribute to the improvement of the conformance checkers by joining the suppliers' communities. So please join our network. Next appointment, a bigger event, so to speak, in the project is an experience workshop that will be held in Berlin, 23rd of November this year. Uh, and the objective is to demonstrate the use of the conformance checkers for file formats developed by the project. In also involve memory institutions outside the performance consumption in testing and using and um, further developing the software and shared experience that we have gained by the performance memory institutions. 
So this is something that you can uh, actually look for and if possible also if you have a chance to, to take part in. You can also follow us uh, on the Performa website and also on the Performa blog. Uh, just follow us and uh, uh, let's go over then to build a PDF and the presentation of, of their work and project. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to the Veda PDF webinar. Um, we're going to split the webinar between myself. Um, my name is Carl Wilson. I'm the technical lead at the Open Preservation Foundation, and we're leading the Veda PDF project. And um, Boris Dubrov, who's um, in charge of the Jewel Labs company, who are our main development contractors. So yeah, we're going to share the responsibilities for presenting between ourselves. And before we start, we'll just have a quick um, overview of what it is we will be talking about today. Um, so what we'll be talking about is first Boris will um, start by talking about our current development status. Um, then we'll have a look at the consortium, uh, the Vera PDF consortium's plans for and uh, development plan, plan for the remainder of 2016. Then I'll take over and be showing you a little of how we've been testing the software so far demonstrations of how to use and test the Vera PDF applications and um, in particular uh, I'll be demonstrating some of the batch processing improvements we've made um, for the next release or in the process of making um, and then I'll cover how we you can help to improve the pre-release software then there'll be a little more of Boris talking about interpreting the results that you get back from the applications and then an outline of our ideas and plans for 2017 um, so with no further ado, I'll hand over to Boris and he'll present the next few slides for you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, as Carl already mentioned, we are responsible for the PDF expertise in this project and uh, also communication with the PDF industry and other vendors who done this before, implemented and implemented some kind of commercial PDFA validators. So, in short, the development status. We are right now at a, a late stage of the development. Uh, the latest uh, release uh, was delivered uh, on September 9, and it's called version 0.22. Uh, we are normally delivering a new update each month, but uh, at the moment we are proud to say that uh, the current stable release already fully supports all aspects of PDFA conformance checking. But we do support all PDFA versions from 1 to 3 and all conformance levels uh, called A, B, Further on in the demo, you'll see how to define what kind of conformance you'd like to check. And you see here is a screenshot uh, just a screenshot how to do this in our uh, desktop application. Apart from uh, just um, verifying the conformance of PDF documents against uh, the ISO specifications for PDF E standard, we also uh, enable institutions to do some extra additional uh, custom checks, which might depend on their internal policies. This is implemented uh, as so-called PDF feature extraction. So we detect, extract uh, a number of uh, features of a PDF document and convert them, report them in an XML format for further processing. In particular, we report on all metadata found in the document, all kinds of resources, including images and fonts. Uh, embedded files, pages, annotations, uh, various kinds of document security. This all makes possible to use uh, VR PDF tool not just for PDF E conformance checks, but also for much more extended checks of what's inside the document. Again, you see a screenshot how it's configurable on a in our GUI application, but of course it's fully supported in all other uh, flavors of the application. And uh, about flavors, the software is delivered 
uh, ready for integration. So we deliver a GUI desktop application for a single file evaluation. So normally this is a starting point for those who wants to expect to play a little bit with the software and understand what it is doing. For batch processing targeting large volume uh, verification of PDF documents, uh, we deliver a command line interface. Uh, we also have a demo website where you can try uh, the software just from your web browser. And uh, for experienced users, uh, we deliver a Java library which allows calling uh, our Java API directly from custom Java-based applications. In addition to uh, PDF related uh, checks, we also uh, enable third parties to deliver more extended validation of, uh, of uh, what's embedded in, into PDF as external formats. For example, you might want to do some custom validation of XMP metadata image compression uh, or file attachments if there is a specific policy for some uh, file types that can or cannot be uh, attached to a PDF document. Fonts, digital signatures, ICC profiles. These are all uh, additional specifications which are included into PDF uh, but not directly um, the main target for VRPDF. As uh, an example, we are collaborating with other parties uh, uh, to do low-level font checks and validation for fonts sitting inside PDF documents based now on, on font specifications. So this is the current state of the art. Uh, the just so you give you a very brief feeling, more will come during Carl's demo. This is an options of a command line application. This is how our website looks like. It's demo.vrpdf.org. Uh, along with the software development, we uh, created a, a quite extensive uh, test corpus covering a lot of um, the technical details inside PDF documents, in, yes, in PDF documents and uh, PDF A standard. So in total, about uh, more than 1,500 1, atomic self-documented test files were created. And uh, well, this is a little stats uh, which, uh, what they cover. So a lot of, quite a lot of test files were generated for part one, the E1, and uh, uh, this complements the already existing test uh, suite called Sartre. Uh, the same for PDF A2. 223 new files were created, uh, part three, levels U and A. Uh, we have also spent uh, a lot of effort uh, creating um, test files for XMP metadata. This is a format used uh, for metadata inside PDF documents not just for PDF documents. So we created a huge set of test files covering all predefined schemas inside XMP specifications from 2004 and 2005. In particular, we believe this might be useful for uh, other formats of libraries that deal with PDF, with XMP uh, standard. Uh, and of course, this test files are used in our uh, continuous builds and testing processes. We maintain a special portal called test, testsvrpdf.org where you can uh, see what's going on right now live on a, on a latest build. That's just uh, filling a screenshot from yesterday when we were preparing this presentation. Uh, or yesterday, before yesterday, so Tuesday, September, current state of um, uh, various test suites. Don't um, be surprised by a red line about uh, B4 test suite. That's another test suite uh, developed by a company called B4. It's it's known that they do have a single file um, which is incorrectly built or created, and this is also a kind of test for us that the testing system is working. 
this is uh, all about current state of the art. And I'm moving to what you can expect till the end of 2016. So we do plan our regular monthly releases uh, beginning of October, November. And the uh, um, first um, full release called VRPDF 1.0 uh, will be delivered uh, the first uh, half of December, which will be kind of the final um, version for the uh, development stage. What uh, we are working on right now, uh, one of the main topics is uh, reporting improvements, in particular um, how to make nicer reports for batch processing. Uh, we uh, spend now some time uh, improving look and feel of HTML reports we deliver and uh, PDF reports are coming. This all will help to understand uh, the results of validation and uh, maybe custom policy checks. For policy checks, um, policy checks, as I mentioned before, allow to impose extra requirements based on the um, features of the PDF files. In addition to this, we uh, are working on what we call risk scoring system for PDFA validation errors. It's uh, known, it's quite common feedback we are getting that quite a lot of PDF documents inside uh, archives are not actually PDFA compliant. And uh, we are trying to help in understanding how important or how critical some errors are. Of course, uh, Institutions, each institution might have uh, its own policy, uh, and our risk score system is essentially a, a highly configurable method to define a single score and a single result, uh, even if the PDF A document is not compliant. Essentially, the institutions might still uh, decide that it is okay to keep it in our hives or accept it to our hives, if it's an entry point. Uh, we will also deliver a common shell for all three performer conformance checkers, so that uh, a single command line interface will work to validate not just PDF files, but also audio and uh, video files. And one large chunk of development is what we call a Greenfield parser, Greenfield PDF parser. So the current implementation we deliver is based on Apache library. However, this library is not compliant with performer licensing requirements, uh, saying that all deliverables should be under MPL 2, 2 plus and GPL 3 plus licenses. So the Greenfield PDF parser will be included into the coming releases and definitely into the final release uh, with version 1.0. And the work we do is uh, very detailed comparison that, we are, that the new PDF parser is uh, delivering identical results to the Apache PDF box and uh, uh, doing better job in terms of performance and memory consumption. Well, I think that's all about the roadmap, and I uh, pass uh, the presentation to Carl, who will proceed with uh, other topics. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about briefly is the current status of um, our testing, where we've got to. So we've been developing for 15 months now in earnest, and um, a little more. Um, but we've really been focusing on developing validation functionality. In particular, we've worked on expanding the test corpus to cover the complete speed PDFA specifications. Um, as Boris said, this is now 1,800 files. We've created all those files individually. Well, the, yeah, the consortium has um, dual labs actually have created the files. Um, and we've really been testing the validation functionality against that corpus. We have been testing um, metadata fixing, we have unit tests for um, the test functionality of the code. But, and our other focus has really been resolving 
ambiguities that we've come across as we try to create test files um, that we've resolved with the technical working group. The thing we probably haven't concentrated as much so far up to now, and partly because we haven't had working um, robust applications, is what we call real-world application testing. It's been a secondary concern up till now. Um, and although we have addressed any feedback, any issues raised on GitHub or any external feedback people who've sent us files or got in touch with problems, we have tried to, we have, well, we have tried to and successfully addressed those in most cases, but we haven't worked too hard to gain um, external feedback. So the DPC Digital Preservation Coalition, who are also part of the Vera Consortium, have been encouraging organizations to test the software. And that's been ongoing for quite a while, but we've been getting a reasonable amount of feedback over the summer through the, um, the DPC's testing efforts. Um, and we've been listening to this and to other external opinions, i.e. issues on GitHub, people who, other people who've been in touch. And our immediate priorities, um, development priorities on the back of this are memory usage is an issue. So both running out of memory and also being able to set the application up with enough memory to process large um, PDFs or complex PDFs. The reliability of batch processing is held back external effort, testing efforts by that. Um, the batch processing hasn't been entirely reliable. If there's a problem in the batch, the, batch, um, the entire batch then fails or it stops with the problem file and doesn't and doesn't carry on. And actually, a, um, not so great batch test, batch reporting options as well. So when you're trying to process large batch of, batch of files, it's, the application throws back a lot of information. Um, so that's the, they're the, um, um, they're the, our immediate priorities from the feedback we've been given so far. Um, our response has been to prioritize um, certain fixes and solutions for those problems for the coming end of September release. So we've already improved batch processing reliability. Um, this has been partly through more robust exception handling and testing what happens particularly when the application runs out of memory and how recoverable that is. Um, improved reporting of um, processing errors, particularly proce um, errors during validation. Um, adding dedicated batch report reporting formats to summarize validation results to make testing large volumes of files easier and memory optimizations in the code where possible um, that is ongoing, ongoing. So these are the features we've been prioritizing for the next release. And we'll take a look at one or two of these features now and also one or two ways that you can use and test the application. Um, so I'm going to try to share my screen now. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the Vera PDF REST client. Um, this is actually available at the URL you see in the window here, but it's um, dem.verapdf.org. It is on running on a development server. It's not intended for um, commercial use or batch use. I don't throw hundreds of files out, but it, it is intended as a way for people to try the software um, without having to install it. So um, a quick demonstration of the way this works is browse for a file here. I'm going to pick a failure, one, a file that I know fails for sure at the moment. Um, it will then just calculate the SHA-1 of that file on your machine for integrity check checking. Um, the next stage, you can pick the validation profile that you want to use um, when validating the document, um, and also pick one of three output formats. I'll just, I will demonstrate those briefly. So I'll start with an HTML format and you'll see straight fairly quickly you get a response back that the um, validation failed in particular it's um, tells you how many rules were in, were used in the profile how many pass, um, checks passed and how many failed and then this um, gives you a little bit more this box down here gives you a little bit more information about the nature of the error um, including its slightly obscure location in the PDF documents, but PDF documents aren't necessarily run on the, they don't look like the document, the structure of the actual file isn't the same as um, the documents. So pages and words aren't key concepts. 
um, so people who understood the PDF format would understand the location key, but it doesn't make that much sense to um, people unfamiliar with PDF. But the other thing this gives you is a link here, which if I open it now in a new tab, takes you to a validation wiki, and in particular the error that's the particular error that's clause 6.4 test number three. And here 6.4.3 and this gives you a more detailed breakdown of what the requirement was from the specification and details of the error and additional references the idea is that we'll gradually add more and more context here um, so quickly just show you what a successful validation looks like um, it's another file from our test corpus that is designed to pass these files are deliberately um, very small, um, as I say, they are, the test, they are the test corpus, but they're ideally suited to um, quick demonstrations. So here's one that I know Pat is. And this time I'll actually ask for the XML format. So this is just the raw output of the RESTful web service. The HTML um, format is processed slightly. So you look at this again, you have a piece of XML this time, but it has the same information in it the number of passes, the flavor whether the file is compliant um, and if you ask for them but not on this server the list of assertions that have failed that's deliberately been left empty um, on this particular validate setup just for memory reasons okay um, so that's one quick way that you can um, try the software and look at individual files the next thing I'm going to show you is just some of the changes we've made to demonstrate one or two of the changes we made at the command line level and particularly around memory usage and batch processing. So I'm going to use two versions of VeriPDF. One is the currently released version. The other one is a de development snapshot that's currently working on my machine for them and will be part of the next release. But as I say at the moment, this is a very much a development snapshot. So at the moment, um, one of the the only batch processing options that um, Vera or friendly batch processing options they have, um, we have two formats. I'll show you the first, which is the XML data. So this is from a small directory with four um, PDF files, some which has passed and some which has failed. And the options I've set up here are I'm calling the application here, I'm asking it to validate using the 1B profile. Uh, you can choose any of the other profiles, but this happens to be from 1B corpus. And the minus R is for recursing process, recursive processing of directories. Um, and this is just a directory in the corpus that contains a, um, a few files. So this is the, what the raw XML out output from that would look like. I'm um, sorry about the switching. It does that every time I run it and there's no way to stop it. <laughs> it's only on the Mac. So these are the four files and the reports. Um, Again, there's a reasonable amount of information in there, particularly when you start to get to um, fail checks. And remember, these are just corpus files. They're deliberately small with very few test cases and very few, um, and in many cases, only one fail check. You can see here that there's 427 um, checks passed. We're deliberately not logging the past checks at the moment because it, even more, even more information. Um, and the only option you have if you want a slightly friendlier version of that would be to specify a more readable version that would be specify um, this flag. So the text format at the moment would be the same thing. Again, you see the same four reports, but this time just in text form with a pass and fail marker for the individual files. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the new version well this i am using a new version but this is the new um beginning of the new batch formatting output so in this case you can now ask for batch form this is still a work in progress but now you there's genuine xml summaries for the individual batch details and a little bit more and um, here you have a little bit more information about the actual process how long it took when it started when it's finished these are figurable, but they give you a bit more in the way of auditing metrics um, if you're interested. Um, and also for us for performance testing. And 
the other um, so the other thing I was going to demonstrate was just the handling the handling out of memory errors now. So what I'm going to do is use the old version of um, the current release version, which is a slightly old version of very PDFs. Um, and I'm going to So this is the 0.22 version. Um, and I want I'm going to first just one particular file which I know causes um, some memory issues. This might take a few seconds to run. This isn't the fastest machine in the world and as it starts to strive for with memory problems, um, it tends to slow down a little, but it does run within 15, 20 seconds even on this machine. Apologies for the wait. So um, yeah, this actually isn't the biggest document in the world. It's um, caused by complexities in the objects and the relationships between them. So the parser, so the parser creates an awful lot of objects, which tends to push the um, memory usage it is taking quite a long time ah, here we are and um, so at the moment this would this fails and you get this um, error here which tells you you run out of memory and give you some idea of how you might expand the memory to um, fix that but the if I then now use the um, current version and then sorry if, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll set it off another version of that but this time actually just in that directory and confirm that if I process that particular directory I'll give it a second again um, again this will so this will basically bring down the entire batch um, start and bring the back to the same time. anyway when the batch comes back you'll find that um Again, it's failed straight away, and the batch processing has failed, even though it should have processed through the three files in the directory. I now um, use the current version, or the current development version of that. Um, this is still slightly a work in progress. But this time, although it will fail the individual file, and the reporting for that, for the batch process, isn't quite in place yet, you'll see that it will actually uh, it does now continue to run and will now continue to run and actually process the other files um, within the directory. These instructions here are for different platforms of how you can go about upping the memory um, for the application. So by typing either this line here on Windows or Mac or this particular line here, uh, we are second, just in time. Um, so here's the batch processing report, and you can see that this time is you have. The one here, which is failed due to out of memory, but the other um, four files have continued to process as expected um, without bringing the entire batch load down. So, um, and all these fixes will be available in the upcoming release, the end of next week, the end of September. Um, things that other batch functionality that may make it in there, but certainly will be in by the end of October, is the ability to pick PDFs out of zip files or different archive formats and process those in a similar fashion to processing the directory and making batch reporting. And so that's the end of the demonstrations and screen sharing. While you go about um, testing, there are various things you can do to help us. Um, so the first thing you can do is raise an issue. The issue here example is a real issue from the site and it's actually to do with crashing without a memory exceptions. And you can see here this was raised by David Russell, he's a member of staff of the British Library, um, and he kindly submitted a, um, a bunch of files which were caused which caused um, out of memory problems. So with an example file it was much easier for us to work out what was going on. Um, so anyone who comes with GitHub issues, it's really reasonably quite straightforward to raise an issue here. You go to this URL, which is the issue tracker for the very PDF library. Um, and the top thing you'll see is 
in the top bar on the right side is a button, a green button that says new issue. If you press that, you're then taken to this dialogue where you just simply write the title of the issue and write a comment describing the issue. Um, then you press the green button down here, which will become bright green once you've filled in some text. And that's all there is to do. Um, the advantage of logging an issue, I'll show you another way that you can actually um, get in touch with us in a second, but the advantage to logging an issue is that the information stays in one place and this is a bit more information from the same issue I showed you earlier. It gives the developers a chance to get in touch to discuss um, and work out a good solution before proceeding. But we do realize that there's quite a few of you aren't that comfortable with GitHub issues or um, it's not a natural thing for you to um, use. So we've now set up um, our first mailing list, genuine mailing list for people interested in very PDF. So the URL for the list is here. Um, it is moderated, so you will have to you'll have to wait a moderation request when if you join. But you can use that for reporting issues, asking questions, suggesting improvements, and talking to other very PDF users and our development team. So the development team will be joining. Um, so, as I say, certainly the, the consortium staff will be um, active on the mailing list and hopefully as more of you join, it, um, there'll be more activity. And that's the end of my current stint and I'll just hand over briefly to Boris again now. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, how do you understand uh, the results reported by your PDF. And uh, I see already some interesting questions in the chat, but probably we'll, we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Uh, the main focus here is about a very complex technology, which is called PDF-A. And it's complex because the uh, PDF standard itself is complex. It's so its specification is over 1,000 pages long, and PDF speaks about really uh, low-level technical issues. We are trying to build a bridge between PDF technology experts in PDF technology and memory institutions, so that uh, you not only can check whether a PDF file is PDFA or not PDFA, but also understand what's wrong with this file and maybe ask um, the creators of this PDF file to fix it at the creation stage. Uh, one, uh, one of the important uh, inputs here is the validation report. So it, it gives you a little bit information uh, on what's wrong how many times they occurred. You see the occurrences here. It also provides uh, low-level information on which pages this issue uh, has happened. It's not demonstrated here, but this button show would provide you a bit more info. And as Carl demonstrated um, before, the uh, title of the failed rule is an active link, and clicking to it, you end up in a, in a wiki where you're getting Oh, at the moment, a bit more information. So it's a citation from the PDFA specification, what exactly is required by the specifications, plus extra more human readable info. In this particular case, the issue is about uh, metrics in the phone. So something is wrong with the glyph widths. And now you see that the, there is an exact citation in PDFA specification saying that for every font embedded in a conforming file, the glyph widths information stored in the width entry of the PDF font dictionary and the embedded font program shall be consistent. Of course, this sounds quite technical, and here is a bit more info on this, telling what is a glyph uh, width uh, and uh, uh, why it is important. Still, uh, might sound a bit short, but uh, we're improving adding more info to the unexperienced users. And um, you also see what exactly was checked for each object. So it's a glyph for which a certain Boolean expression is false. This is our internal model grammar for validating PDF uh, A files. 
that come uh, built into validation profiles, Carl mentioned before. Again, uh, if something is, sounds quite technical and you still don't understand what's wrong with your document and you need to know this, don't hesitate to send us questions to the mailing list. And if you think the software misbehaves or you've seen the same file validated correctly, uh, one application and we are reporting some errors, uh, please send us your test files or at least some more information so that we investigate it further and improve the software. Okay. Uh, the feature report is XML based and uh, there is a very short uh, uh, screenshot of what it reports. You're not probably supposed to see anything uh, clearly here, but uh, it just shows the embedded metadata into the document plus a bit more info about embedded files, which are here. And this can be easily analyzed by further processing. So this is how you get hold on, on your PDF files or what's inside PDF files on top of just single answer, fail, or pass valid PDF A validation. And, uh, this is probably the end of my technical add-on and uh, I'm switching again to Carl. Okay, yeah. I'm going to wrap up and I'll wrap up fairly quickly just so we can have time for the um, couple of questions. Um, so I'd just like to say a little bit of our future plans from well June 2017 onwards but also for 2017. Um, so the Performer project funding ends at the end of the testing phase but that's actually a separate um, procurement bid. We, we're not guaranteed to be part of the testing phase at the moment. So development um, stops at the end of 2016, but it won't stop altogether. So, presuming that we were in the performer testing phase, the Ver um, while performer tests the software, the very PDF consortium will continue to address bugs reported on GitHub, um, test and merge um, small pull requests submitted to GitHub, and provide answers and support for the mailing list um, inquiries. We will also be available for priority or paid supports. Um, or for um, new development or integration with local systems, again, um, on a paid basis. And But new features and functionality, substantial development would require some kind of um, external funding or external development resource during that time. And we'll obviously be working closely with Performer over the testing phase to um, ensure that um, their feedback is taken care of and any, any problems they find are fixed. Um, in fact, sorry, these two slides have somehow become reversed because this is actually telling you about the test. They should have been the other, the other um, order. So this actually um, tells you about the testing phase, which, as I say, prototyping ends in 2016. We'll be running a testing phase through to June, and during that time, we will continue to address issues, pull requests, update the website, and provide support, and also improve documentation. Um, and yes, as I say, beyond 2070, beyond the testing phase, things are um, there would be no more funding, but yeah, we are available to, to do work and we won't be abandoning the um, application, certainly. So we'll certainly be fixing bugs and merging small pull requests and continue with the mailing list. Um, that brings to the end of the presentation, presentations today. Um, I think we we'll probably have time for one or two quick questions. Um, Patricia, the can you check a PDFA without any specification? Does that mean I presume you mean, um, do you have to pass a particular specification if that's the case? I, do you have to specify 1B or 1A? Um, actually, no, the software has an auto, auto mode where it will look within a PDF, decide what flavor it thinks it is from the associated metadata, and then validate the PDF against that flavor. So you can actually just leave it in auto mode and it will switch between flavors as it comes to them. And Lorraine. So the clear, yeah, the version don't, doesn't just skip the bad file, it actually logs a report about the file as well. Um, so you, you know there's been a failure with a particular file, but it doesn't prevent the entire batch from completing. Um, Stefan's question, I think I'd like to hand over to Boris if I could. <laughs> Go 
conforms sure. to this PDF. Yeah, yeah, here, yep. Uh, so the main focus is uh, PDF uh, A validation. The complete R PDF 1.7 validation, or as it is an international standard, would be ISO 32000 validation, uh, is uh, out of scope of the project formally. Uh, however, if we encounter any issues with, P with ISO specification during our validation, we do uh, raise an error as well and report it. So, but we don't do any schematic checks of the complete 1,000 pages of the specification, as in fact that's uh, probably five to ten times uh, uh, larger task, and it's been outside of the main focus of reform project. Any other questions? There's somebody typing now. Oh, there, was, there seems to be someone typing briefly. <laughs> well, I, I, I have yeah. Um, yes. So the short answer to that is yes, it works upon a base. You can even so you, you pass it a base to a wiki, which is assumed then has the links in a particular um, manner so that you can find the actual um, thing on the page. So the local system, you'd have to have the internet to get to the wiki, or you could alternatively host a local wiki and point it at that if, if, you, did, if you wanted a, an enclosed system that wasn't on, the, um, on an outside network. So yeah, both of those are options. So it, will, yeah, it can work with a local wiki and a local system will still reach out to the wiki, yeah, as long as you've got the internet, basically. Yeah, just to be clear here, the, the wiki is just a set of markdown files, and uh, it's quite... Uh, and the location, the base URL for the wiki is fully configurable, so if you like, you can indeed just uh, have it running locally yeah, without any issues. You could host your own. Any more questions? If not, all I would like to say is that, as I say, the new release will be out at the end of next week, the 0.22 release, and 24 release, sorry. And um, yeah, any testing help and feedback would be greatly appreciated because we're really close to a final production version and your feedback will really help make that better. Thanks very much. Yeah, so thank you very much, Carl, Boris, and Buria. Um, as I said at the beginning, we'll make all the um, make all the slides and the recording available through the performer website, and we'll also send round some of the the links we talked about, so to the mailing list and the demo site, etc. We do have time for a couple more questions. If anyone has any. Let's get wait a few right around for a few minutes more. So no one seems to be typing. So if you do think of any questions afterwards, as I say, please do get in touch with us if you have any feedback or problems. And um, yeah, that's it. That's the final of the three from webinars. So thank you very much all for your attention. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will close the webinar now. So bye for now. Yeah, just to say sorry if you do have another question, any questions, do join the mailing list. <laughs> That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. Right. Bye.